Jesus is the way. You and I are the vessels that he's going to use to go to the world. 
This morning it's good to have Brother Strunk again. We have not been here, Brother Strunk pastored many, many years down in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, been with us many times, and I appreciate him. Amen. I want you to listen, give him your undivided attention, and I'm not accountable for anything he says. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Good morning. Got to get this out of the way. I'm 82 and I don't look it. Say amen. I told Loretta last night on the telephone, I said, honey, you would have to be here to sense the spirit of Bible Baptist Church. It just, it can't be explained. And you are so special. Pastor and Mrs. Maple are pure gold. The Pattons are top shelf missionaries. What a joy it is to be able to support people like them that do what they're doing the way that they do it. I love the story about a man, businessman, who when he was out of town, he always tried to find a good Bible-believing, heaven high, hell hot, Jesus saves, glory to God, church to go to. But this particular weekend, he couldn't find what he wanted, and he had to go to the first church. And so he went in, and he said when he went in, they handed him a menu, and he went and sat down, and it was so cold, he felt like he could ice skate down the aisle. And he sat down, and pretty soon the pastor came out with a robe on and a collar. And, and uh, instead of saying God, he said God. And he thought, my. But, uh, but the, 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 the pastor began to give some scripture. And the old salesman, when he heard that scripture, got happy, and he hollered, Amen. Boy, I mean, it just was phew. Just stony silence. And uh, the preacher went on, quoted another scripture, and he said, Amen. And pretty soon an usher come down the aisle and tapped him on the shoulder and said, Sir, you're going to have to be quiet in here. He said, I can't help it. I've got the old-time religion. And the usher said, You didn't get it in here, so keep quiet anyway. Amen. Well, this is not that kind of church. Now, I want you to open your Bibles, please, first of all, to the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. Hebrews, chapter 1, because nothing speaks of the Bible better than the Bible itself. And we're going to get right into the Word of God, and you'll look at it with me, please. Hebrews, chapter 13. Page number 1861 in my Bible. That might help you a little bit. <laughs> Hebrews 13. Mm, I'd love to hear those pages turning. Hear that better here than anywhere. Because you're the Bible Baptist Church. You don't believe the Bible just contains the Word of God. You believe it is the Word of God. Are you there? Say amen. amen. Beginning in verse number 1, Hebrews chapter 13. Let brotherly love continue. I see that as much in this church as anywhere I go. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. <coughs> For thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember that them that are in bonds as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. 
Let your conversation be with thy covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. I want you to read that verse out loud with me and read it like you mean it. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. Now would you please turn to the book of Malachi. That's the little book just before the book of Matthew. The book of Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Are you there? Yeah. Are you still on the way? Malachi chapter 3 beginning in verse number 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are going away from mine ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet, we have robbed, yet ye have robbed me, and ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings you pay your tithe you don't give your tithe that's the lord's already then we have the joy of offerings which we are emphasizing in this mission conference in a faith promise missions giving and we find out and you have found out i know you faithful long-term members have found out you cannot give the lord Verse 9, ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That's the church. I believe all of God's giving, your giving to God, now listen close, ought to be given through the church. The church is accountable. The pastor is accountable. When you give, and you say, well, should I not give to anyone else? Give through your church. <laughs> give through your church. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Oh, I love that. See, you cannot give the Lord. We don't give to get. That's the wrong motive. But I'll tell you what, you find out you give with a little shovel and God gives with a big one. Right. You cannot give the Lord. Right. During this COVID-19, we have been reminded rather starkly that we don't like change. We are creatures of habit. We don't like our nests stirred. We may like variety, but not change. Things begin to change in the Garden of Eden 
when God said no and man said yes. Sin always changes things and never, ever for the better. If God changes, faith is useless. If God changes, his promises are useless. If the Holy Spirit changes, we have no sure guide. If the word of God changes, we cannot be sure of anything. Moses asked God what to say to the children of Israel when they ask who sent you, what is his name? And God said, tell them, I am have sent you. Not I was, not I shall be, both of which would mean change. I love the song, great is thy faithfulness. Amen. Oh God, my father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever shalt be. Amen. This may be his greatest attribute, because if he changes, or could change, all the attributes could fail. What if he is omnipotent? That means he knows all things, but only some of the time. He is immutable. You say, what does immutable means? It means he is unchanging over time or unable to be changed. The immutability of God is an attribute that God is unchanging in his character and will and covenant promises. God is a spirit whose being, wisdom, power, holiness, justice, goodness, and truth are infinite, eternal, and unchangeable. Those things do not, and what is more, cannot change. Now, are you still awake? Say amen. amen. Let's work at it now. Let me ask you this question. Is there anything around you changing? Look at the person next to you right now and say, have I changed any? Do it. Have I changed? Now, come on. We don't want to have a right. We want to have revival. <laughs> We live in a changing world. Weather changes. Our body changes. <laughs> One woman said to her friend, when I married my husband, he was the apple of my eye. And now he's the potato of my couch. <laughs> That's what I am now. I'm the potato of the couch. Our bodies change. I get a kick. I really do. I get a kick out of talking about this. Uh, when, we, when Loretta and I got married 61 years ago. Amen. Uh, she weighed 120 pounds. I weighed 155 pounds. I've got a picture in my pocket here to prove that. My wife doesn't like me to show it. But I've got a picture in my pocket to prove that if you want to see it after church. And in the picture, it shows us on Galveston Beach and on our honeymoon. And it was chilly, so I had shoes on on the beach. 
You'll see in this picture that she is was and is a model. And you will also see in this picture that I'm not lying when I say I weighed 155 pounds <laughs> when I got married 61 years ago. We've been married 61 years. She weighs now 120 pounds. <laughs> She went to the doctor a couple weeks ago and I said, what were the scale? 120. Makes me sick. <laughs> I weigh 255 pounds. <laughs> She's gained nothing. I've gained 100 pounds in these 61 years. And I've let her know constantly it's genetic. <laughs> it's genetic. I mean, you know, she's not a turtle lover like I am, uh, and I'm not going to try to explain that if you were not here last night. <laughs> She'll take one turtle and eat it and be satisfied. <laughs> Isn't that sickening? <laughs> one turtle, that be. And I wipe the box <laughs> and she says, why doesn't that make you sick? I said, it doesn't make me sick, it makes me happy. <laughs> and then I found that later, scientifically, it's true. It's a serotonin uplift. <laughs> Bring the chocolate on! <laughs> Our bodies change. I used to wonder why old people walk like this. That's the way I walk. Claude Crittenden, you know, who was a giant of a preacher. Claude Crittenden, he walked like this when he got 80. And I thought, why the world is he walking like that? And then I used to look at people that, you know, they'd get up and, you know, real slow, and, and then they'd. You know, and then they take off like this. And I, and I, now, this wasn't in a malicious or judgmental way, but I would just think to myself, why don't they get going? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? If you live long enough, you'll find out why they don't get going. Right. <laughs> Some of you young people, I wish I could live long enough to see you get there. <laughs> <laughs> These bodies change. That's right. Do all you want to to hold it back. But Father Time, God's designed it that way. Father Time is going to take care of us. Right. And Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Amen. Moods change. Don't look around now. People change. Even you change. Dreams change. Styles change. <laughs> you know, I remember not too long ago when if you wore a suit, that button is real tight here in the middle and the bottom spread out and you're tired come down and showed at the bottom, you'd be a redneck. You wouldn't know how to dress. I bought a couple suits back a year or so ago, and, and uh, this was one of them. And, you know, we put it on, the tie's hanging down there. And I said, What's, how come this, this way? He said, that's the style now. That's the style. And he said, if you want anything different, you'll have to order it. Yeah, and you know, styles change. So you know what I do? I do like Trump and I leave my coat open and tie the tie extra long and leave, the, leave it hanging down. Amen. Now it's also more comfortable. You know, when you wear these things like this, I don't feel like I've got a girdle on, I've got enough trouble. <laughs> styles change. Right. Our country.
country changes. Freedoms change. Leaders change. Plans change. The economy changes. And guess what? Even our changes change. Now, God does not and cannot change. That's right. Amen. Else he could not be perfect. That's right. The immutability of God is the principle that, that God does not change. He is the same today as he was a thousand years ago. Amen. Two thousand years ago. 3,000 years ago, throughout eternity past, God is infinite. God's nature does not change, nor does his character, nor his attributes change. When something changes, it is made better or different. But because God is perfect, he cannot be made better or develop into a holier, holier being. There is no need for him to change. The immutability of God gives us comfort and security in who we are and who God is. Knowing God does not change provides us with a spiritual and moral anchor in a rapidly changing culture. When we are pulled in many directions and are searching for answers, we can know that God is constant, dependable, and faithful to help us when we ask him. Right. Yeah. I am the Lord, I change not. Yeah. Now, for just a couple of hours, I want to give you three or four things that God doesn't change about. Thank God who doesn't change. You do? Amen. Now, are you still awake? Amen. Amen. God does not change when it comes to his love. Amen. Right. When I was a teenager, I believe about 15 years old, in the Orlando Baptist Temple in Orlando, Florida, where I was saved. The first solo that I ever sang was the love of God. Yeah. Amen. Oh, the love of God, how rich, how pure, how measureless and strong it shall forevermore endure the saints and the angels' song. Amen. His love. Jesus loves me. 
Jesus loves me, this I know.
faithful, faithful people. I mean, deacons and singers and faithful people that go on to be the Lord. By the way, you like to be old and die. That's right. Right. This is kind of short grazing the cemetery is all along. Right. You don't have to be old to die. You don't have to be old to get sick. Right. While we need to be saved. Brother Terry, I just told you, was on music director for 40 years, Terry Blaine. 40 years. Great music director. Great choir. He was one. God told me. He's getting ready to retire uh, the last of December, last next month. And he got hit with that COVID and they took him down and he ended up in the hospital for three or four weeks. He ended up on the ventilator. He ended up in critical care for weeks. Uh, the doctor said that they'd never seen anybody go as far as he did and live to survive it. And so he's making a comeback, but it's a slow, arduous comeback. It's going to take a long, long time. It can happen to anybody. Right. Thank God he didn't die, but he could. So I think about these people. I stay with me. I got to land this plane. Uh, I see these people like lightning flashing through my mind. Was left of it right now. I see their faces. I remember their fellowship, their love, right? Their kindness, their gracious. I just remember it and and. Uh, I just lost my good friend Pat McCall, who passed the faith at the church in Jacksonville for 27 years. He and I were tight. We traveled this country together and other parts of the world. And I lost, he's gone. He was four years older than me. And I talked to him about him before he died. And he said, hey, you want to do something right now? I've never been through before. But I know God.